tributes have been pouring in for trailblazing Senator Dianne Feinstein, who passed away overnight after a 30-year tenure on Capitol Hill. But now all eyes are turning to California Governor Newsom and who he'll pick to fill her seat. Let's bring in Shannon Bream now, Fox News Sunday anchor. Shannon, great to have you here in New York City. Good to see you in person. You picked a heck of a weather day to be here. <laughs> yes, I did. I like to come in the storm. Uh, but what a news day this is, and to have lost uh, such a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. um, she will be difficult to obviously replace. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing is, I mean, the longest serving female senator ever in the U.S. Senate, she broke so many glass ceilings and will be reminded. Um, I am reminded hearing from people on both sides of the aisle saying, even if we didn't agree on things, she was fair and we had cordial conversations and she fought passionately for what she cared about. But this conversation, because she's been ill, started months ago about what Governor, New uh, Governor Gavin Newsom would do. He angered some people by saying that he would put somebody in their interim. He doesn't want to appoint somebody who's actually running for the seat because he doesn't want to get in the middle of the primary process. So that's gotten some backlash from some of these members of Congress who say, you know, Barbara Lee, for example, he has said he'll choose a woman of color. And she says, well, I shouldn't be disqualified because I'm running for this seat. You should put somebody in there who can also then continue to run for the seat. While we are all saying our goodbyes and remembering her so fondly and, and and you and I were just looking through some of these old black and white mm -hmm. photos. I mean, just such an incredible life she lived. Uh, there's already a discussion started on um, mm -hmm. Politico's writing this in a headline just a few minutes ago. Pressures on Newsom to quickly mm -hmm. appoint Feinstein's temporary replacement. Feinstein's death will upend the intensifying race to replace her and force Newsom into a painful political decision. Yeah, and there are already three House members who have said they want to run or they've made their intentions clear that they do. And they represent all different factions. They have different supporters, you know, Pelosi. The, um, Nancy Pelosi, the former speaker, and others are weighing in to back different candidates. Mm. So it's already a very heated sort of primary fight there. Um, but if he chooses somebody, who would he put in the seat that's qualified to be a U.S. senator and represent the state well, but has no ambitions mm -hmm. beyond, you know, a year from now? Or would they get into the seat and say, oh, no, I think I can do a good job in this gig. I want to run for it, too. It, it's messy for him, and it puts a lot of political pressure on him. A lot of tricky, sticky requirements mm -hmm. there um, to do so. Meanwhile, the impeachment hearing. Nancy Mace said this about that. Listen. My Democrat colleagues say none of this is relevant because Joe Biden wasn't vice president while his family de did these shady deals. Turns out that's complete and total b Yesterday was quite something, Shannon. <laughs> There's been more bleeping on Capitol <laughs> Hill recently. Yes. There are high Especially passions yesterday. up there. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, Republicans are taking heat for under-delivering, some people will argue, on this hearing yesterday. They said this isn't about the articles of impeachment. This is just setting the framework that there is a cause and a purpose for the inquiry itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what yesterday was about. Democrats will continue to say there's no smoking gun. You've been at this for months. Mm -hmm. But as we keep saying, if you hadn't had the two IRS whistleblowers, if House uh, Republicans had not taken over those committees, we wouldn't know a lot of this. And the White House has, I think it's fair to say, move the goalpost a bit. He didn't know anything about the businesses. He never talked to him. Then we find out there were dinners, there were other conversations, and that maybe there's more to this than we know. Really interesting. You've got a huge show coming up this weekend. We do. As I think we're probably going to hit a government shutdown Sunday morning, we've got uh, two members of Congress on either side of this fight, Byron Donalds and French Hill, both of them Republicans, but that's where the fight is. Senator Joe Manchin to talk about Feinstein's legacy. Also, Senator Menendez, what goes on with that seat? And Nikki Haley, of course, on 2024, as there's now a a lot of talk about her gaining ground after these two debates and donors being interested in her. Can't wait for all of that. So good to have you here, Shannon. See you Sunday. We'll be watching. See you Sunday. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.